Hello and welcome. This is Ab at Time for Clocks. Thank you for joining me for another episode. The previous video that I have uploaded, the Antique Seikosha Wall Clock Repair Part 2 video, that's where I stopped my latest videos. And when I stopped them, many of you know it's because I have to take care of a ailing family member who is essentially bedridden and my time for working on clocks is very limited. So I still plan on doing part three for the Sikosha wall clock repair, but it's slow in coming. So just a word to the subscribers and anyone interested, videos will come out as I'm able. What I can do, what I do have time for is editing because I don't have to come out here to the shop. I can edit and that's what I've been doing. I've been editing some of the older videos and trying to make them better, more concise, easy to follow, more clear. And this video is in that same line. It is the 1934 Ingram Bedford Time wall clock. I did not repair or restore it to museum standards or even professional standards. But what I did, I have no regrets. I did the best I could with what I have and what I know. And I think it turned out pretty good and it keeps good time and it runs almost to the 10th day. It's an eight day clock. So without further ado, thanks again for watching and here's the Bedford Time Only Repair Series. Thank you. Hello, this is Ab at Time for Clocks. Welcome. The 1934 Ingram Bedford wall clock it has some case damage but this is a larger size clock again it's 25 inches high by 17 inches across at its widest points the glass is all coming out it's going to be cleaned properly uh, there's a lot of elements to this clock that need attention so this is not going to be a short video <laughs> I don't know which of my videos are short videos but this definitely isn't going to be one of them so we might as well just get into it. You can see this bottom section little door here. See how it moves? And one of the hinges is bent. It's curved. It's not flat. So first all I'm going to do is take these hinges off. This one's really tight. It wasn't even screwed down all the way because it was so tight. So that hole can be uh, cleaned out a little bit so they fit all the way down. Probably if this fell off the wall at one time, the force of it bent bent that. This one this one's okay. But this one I'm gonna have to straighten that out. Okay, and the glass is just held on with these two little blocks. Held on with a little brad nail, two brad nails. I'm going to remove those. Oh, and the eyelet on the side for the door catch. That was real loose in there. This one looks a little tighter in there, so I'm going to use something other than the something thinner than the end of the screwdriver. And you can see there's also some looks like old finish layered on top of this wood. So I think at one time that got stripped away. I'm not certain. Then you can also see indentations of the staples here in the bottom. These mitered splines. There's a staple here, here, and here. And when the door closed, it was rubbing up against them and made indentation here. So I don't know if those staples are original, but I might drive them down a little bit so they don't contact the wood. And you can see how dirty it is. Looks like old finish in the... Uh, corners here. 
I don't know if that's glue or shellac. And dirt, and there's dirt in there. You can see in the corner here. Right there. Something built up there. So I'm just going to take out this strip so I can clean all around in here. Just a note about the way this was constructed. See, this is this is oak. This is oak going all the way around, but if you look at the top, you'll see it's a different wood, and it looks like mahogany there. They just, uh, I don't know if that was a repair that somebody put in, but all the way around, you have this oak that was laminated onto this, this other wood underneath. All right, by putting in this one tool here and then using the other one to pry against it, or I could even use my screwdriver to pry against it, that way I'm not prying against the wood. And that nail should, yep, yeah, it just lifts right out of there. All right, well, I got that pulled out with the pliers and I found out that those were modern uh, little finishing nails. So I know they... I know this uh, case had some repair work done on it. Still not sure what that is. I think I'm going to sand that off. And with a different, like no finish here, some finish here. I might just go over it with 320 or 220. Just put something on there to protect it. I have this uh, stain pin and it matches the color pretty good here so let's see okay here's a couple right here let's try that There. There, that took it off and mellowed it. So first I thought it was going to be a big problem. I mean, the scratches are still there. They're a little bit deep. But the color is the color is pretty much matched now. See that? I just rubbed it with my uh slightly damp Murphy oil rag. Well, just an experiment. I had this uh, old English scratch cover and I went around the edge with the 220 just just real light and then I put some of that scratch cover on my rag and it seemed it seems to blend everything together. That actually looks pretty good. To blend it in, I just might use the dark and go around the whole thing. I'm not sure. I don't know. I decided to put this light scratch cover over the outside also. So I'm putting it on. Let it dry and then I'll come back and buff it. While I'm waiting for the paste wax to dry, I will clean the glass. Yeah. Alright, here's the filthy clock glass. You can see all the junk on there. But, 1934 is a great expanse of time. Now the uh, transfer is put on from the inside, so I'm going to clean the outside first. And all I'm going to use is uh, Windex. And then go over the whole thing. 
and then I'm just gonna go I'm just gonna give it a quick around the edge since the inside was so dirty now with that regulator with the transfer side facing you that's how they put it on from the insides I'm just gonna go around the outside of that transfer so that I don't take any of it off by overzealous cleaning and then uh, around the edge very carefully now even though a lot of that dirt is hidden inside the frame of the little little door some of that is visible at the edge now let's see let's see how we we've done a little better I would not be having a good day if I dropped this right now <laughs> And this will get set aside until I'm ready to put it back in the little door. Anyhow, I just keep going around until I'm satisfied. Here's the outside of the little door. And then here's the inside. The inside I didn't put any wax. All I did was put that uh, put the Old English scratch cover and then I gave that a little buff also. I changed my plan a little bit. Originally it had uh, to hold the glass in. It had two pieces and the other one is made from different wood entirely. Plus I broke it. It's just real cheap wood. So I decided to make some pieces that go all the way around in here and I mitered them and then I just have to sand them to after I put the glass in these will stick up too much so I have to just uh, sand, sand them till they're when they're put in they'll be flush or just a little bit below this lip and then I just use a sander to uh, sand them down. finish these little strips I just use the old English again and uh, I don't need to put anything else on there okay I mark the holes for the nails indent that to get it the hole started so the drill doesn't drift I might be able to use just a little bit bigger one. It's still pretty tight. I don't want to split the wood. So I will use a bigger drill bit. Okay, then I'll just go around and do that to each little piece. The little hinges for the door, they were, they were bent initially. And I think I got them pretty flat just by using my little pliers and just squeezing like that and then putting a little pressure on. And it took out, I would say, most of that pretty flat. I did put a few drops of sewing machine oil in here just to to get it to move nice. The It has a steel pin in the middle going through and it had a little uh, rust on there so I just hit that the ends on the wire wheel and I put some oil in there and worked it in real good. So that should be good enough for the hinge. For the holes where the screws for the hinge go I'm going to make sure that these screw all the way down because when I took them out they weren't all the way down and sometimes the hole becomes so tight you can't screw it in any further without stripping the head 
So as long as the whole, as long as those can go all the way down, they'll be good. And if they don't, I'll just drill it out a little bit so they so they fit flush. Okay, these snug up very nice, and you don't want to do too much. That could strip the inside, and then they just spin around and around, and they don't hold anything. All right. I did put some more old English over the top and then I'll uh, rub that in after it dries. I hook on the side to catch the door latch, little door latch. Right there. Okay. Okay, there's the completed uh, glass with the retaining wood and the brass pins that I, or brads that I decided to use. Then I'll clean the glass, give the glass a last clean before I put everything together. The little catch that catches the, uh, that goes in the little hook on the side of the door at the bottom. I noticed that whoever finished this in the past, they did it with the hook on because there's dried, looks like varnish or something on the surface of that. We'll see how I can dress it up a little bit. Just a quick word about clock keys. Many times you'll get a clock and it will have no key. This one by uh, Popular Progress is a replacement key and they're actually, the company's still in business. They make them uh, a lot of different clock parts. On the arbor here, you see this? That is a key that does not fit properly. I use my master key down here and I tried the different sizes and the number four fits on there perfect like that see there's no slop in there anyhow I didn't have a Ingram uh, number four and I looked at this one and this has a five on it this is a number five and that fits better than the six there's still a little play but that is workable because I, I did find another number four and I tried it and it wouldn't even go on. So a lot of these sizes, they are dependent upon how the, the maker made the arbor, how much the arbor has worn down. Somebody was sloppy in making the key. There's so many variables. So the correct answer to what size clock key fits my clock is the one that fits with minimal slop. I think I'll go with this one. And it is Ingram, but it's a number five. And Ingram, they have this noticeable flare right here that comes to a point in the middle. That's an Ingram key. I mean, I mean, there's a little play in there. It's, it's not, it's not bad. Okay, since I'm gonna go with this Ingram number five key, it seemed to be a very nice fit. I shined it up with my semi-chrome polish and that'll be ready for when everything goes back together. As time went on, Ingram, Ingram's uh, pendulums, uh, they did get a little more cheaper in materials. But this is an Ingram pendulum and you can tell by the design on it, little tree, little uh, tower, might be a clock tower or a church or something, a little scene there. That is, when you see that, you know it's Ingram. But again, your pendulum, it can work on other kitchen clocks too. In fact, Ingram sold pendulums from Ansonia and Waterbury. The shaft here is steel and it has rust on it. You can see it's not in the best of shape. And it is threaded at the bottom. This, the, uh, it's called the rating nut. When you turn it up, it moves the pendulum up, or if you turn it down, it, the pendulum drops lower, and then it moves slower. So I'm gonna clean all that up. I think the nut is brass, so this is steel, 
And this itself, somebody painted this. I haven't decided what I'm going to do about this, but this I can clean up. So we'll just take the nut off and I'll polish that with my semi-chrome. I don't know if I'll show that. It's so easy. Anyone can just do that. But all the rust on here, I think I'll just hit it with the wire, wire wheel and then come back and use the polish on it. Using my, I hit it with the wire wheel. Careful not to wear away the threads for the rating nut. You want to keep those. And then uh, with the pol metal polish, just get that pendulum rod looking a little better. Okay, I wasn't quite happy with the finish that was going on there, so I took it to the buffing wheel and that brought it up just a little better. Steel, steel just takes a little, a little extra, a little extra effort. All right, that's looking nice. I found out this is aluminum and I'm pretty sure it's original but the casting was pretty rough. You can still see rough edges on the back and all around the edge it had a rough edge. So I hit that on the wire wheel just to smooth that out. And I don't know if it's good or bad but I'm just going to uh, use some rub and buff and see how that comes out. The gold color. It's not really gold. I think that looks a little better. Typically this is a put on and then rub it later for a little bit finer sheen. It's kind of like a metallic paint wax combo. See the part where I went around the edge with the wire wheel? That dresses up pretty nice. Okay, so I'm just going to go around and do that. Alright, I finished the pendulum with the rub and buff metallic wax. And then I, I did just spray a little coat of shellac over the body of the pendulum and then I put just the slightest drop of oil on the thread just just so the rating nut would spin nicely so now this will be ready to go back in the case when I'm finished there are a number of issues with this door when I open it up the hinge. This one is not only loose, it's kind of bent like the other one, but also the hinge, hinge itself is a little loose so I'll have to tighten that up. And I'm not sure if this glass is original. It's very thick. I'll have to look at that more when I take it out, but when this closes, these blocks these blocks here that hold the uh, glass in, they, they were contacting the dial. And everywhere they contacted, they left an Im imprint and discoloration on the dial. I don't know why they're touching the dial, unless the glass, this has been replaced. And because the glass is thicker, it pushes these retaining blocks out farther. And so it touches the dial. All right. I'll take this uh, hinges off. Get this door off. And I'll just clean all these hinges up just like the ones for the little door. Surprisingly, the hinge is the same size, although the weight that it carries on this door is considerably more. Alright. Yeah, this dial, it's painted on this on this tin backing. And it does have some grime on there, but if you start to clean that and that paint comes away, it'll look worse. So let's get these, uh, let's get this nut off for the hands. I'm using these plastic 
tweezers because sometimes if you use metal ones it will make the paint crack and flake off the uh, metal nut and then uh, the hand just lifts off this one is usually press fit okay not very tight that's fine And these hands, they are steel. And there's just a little bit of rust on here. I'm going to try to... Anytime you have rust, you want to arrest it. You want to take it off. Because it'll spread. Like there's some here. And then I'll decide what to... How to... Re-black these hands. I don't know if bluing will come close. Sometimes uh, uh, one of those permanent markers works. So, we'll see about that later. Okay, little pan head screws. All right. Sometimes on a clock, it's hard to tell what's original and what isn't. And mostly, if I'm not sure, I just try to make, uh, make do with what's on there. All right, let's see if, let's see this lifting off. Wow, a little rust on there. Not good. You don't want that rust bleeding through. I'm, in fact, it's already flaking over here. So I'm gonna have to uh, I'm gonna have to get all that off. That might be challenging. Wow, this might be a paper dial. There's actually uh, there's actually two layers here I can see. I don't know, it's, it's really hard. It's really really small. Okay, I'm gonna have to look at that later. Well, here's the first glimpse of the inside. We can see the water damage and the delamination. Real rough. Some splitting where the hinge goes. That's not good. All this splitting here. On the inside you don't see everything, but it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right, but inside, what do we got? The inside actually doesn't look bad. Looks like the original unfinished oak in there. Maybe with some light stain. It's an Ingram time only movement. Plate has a stamp of 11, 30. 11 on one side, 30 on the other, which I believe is November 1930. I think that's a date stamp. Why they just can't put 1930 on there, I don't know. They had to have, clockmakers had to have this, these codes. Blue there. Somebody put these boards for the movement. Looks like they glued them on. I'll just get my uh, screwdriver and take out these bolts and take the whole thing out there. Initially, I see dirt. I don't see excessive wear and pivot holes. Maybe a little there. I don't know. Then I'll have to look at the other side. But, uh. 
Okay, we want to get it doing that again. What the screws holding the movement should not do is go through the back of the case. I mean, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't be able to see them through, from the back. It's a good cleaning. That might, well, let's see. That has a little bit. I don't know. We'll see. All right, we'll set that aside to clean up later. So these two piece, thin pieces of laminate and this big slop of glue here, I don't like that at all. And the screws did go all the way through the back. I think they should just stop short of penetrating. I'm not positive on that. And there's there was a little there's a little wire here, and I was debating whether or not that came with it. Sometimes people will put those in, but the instructions say that there is a there is a wire that holds the pendulum. Let's see. Uh, remove fastener that holds pendulum rod in place. In case of a hanging model, fasten the clock to the wall through hanger at top of case. Let's see, start ball in motion, see the clock is level. Hmm. Sometimes they'll have a little wire in here to, to, like if you, to keep the pendulum from moving. Like they don't want the clock to run. Instead of banging back and forth, they'll, they'll loop the, this around the rod. So I don't... Is that original or not? I don't know. I'm going to have to look at pictures of other ones to see. So, it's definitely needs needs to be cleaned up inside. <clears throat> and I think these these were put in here to raise the pendulum up a little bit to keep the screws from protruding more through the through the back. Okay. This board's curved. Green paint from somebody's wall. Yeah. And these big wings here, I think somebody added those uh, for stability. I might sand them. I don't think I'm gonna mess around with those. It's missing the latch here. All right, what to do, what to do. I wanted to correct something that I said. I thought the number here on the movement plate, 11, and on this side it says 30. I thought this, this meant the month, November 1930. I still believe this means 1930, but I don't think this means the month. Now French clocks, when they have a number here, it's for the length of the pendulum. Now this says 11, and just by chance, I measured, and what you measure is from where, from where the suspension spring goes through this post, where it's held from there, down to the center of the pendulum bob, that's what you measure. And what 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 measurement do I get? Eleven inches to the center of the pendulum bob to the suspension spring. So I'm pretty sure that that eleven means the length of the pendulum. Eleven inches to the center of the bob to where it connects to the suspension post. <laughs> If you have any more thoughts on that, please leave a comment. I'm always open to uh, correction and learning new things. All right. 
All right, I'm gonna tackle the door here. And you can see in a little more detail how these blocks right here that hold the glass in, how they are raised above the level of the door so that they hit the dial when you close it. Again, I've seen other I have seen other clocks similar to this with these blocks in there, but I think I'm going to sand them down so they don't extend past the end. The, I mean the surface of the wood. So let's take those out. Oh, and also this this, uh, this little the door catch that is just such a rinky dink looking thing. Look at that. It's just cheap brass and someone and then and the nails that hold it on aren't even the same size. Two different size nails. So I don't think I don't think that's original because that's that's gonna hit the wood when you close it. So we'll see what we can do about that. Is it original? I don't know. It looks a bit flimsy. Alright, I'm gonna pull these blocks out of here. Carefully. <clears throat> All right, looks like this one was glued in, but it is coming out anyway. I might have to make a new one there. Only had to take out two blocks, left two in. Wow. Look how dirty that is. Wow. All right. Got a lot of cleaning on that to do. And now that I look at it, I think this is the original glass. It just seems a little thick and I was concerned about weight in that door for those small hinges but we'll clean this up just like I did the other one How, the same way I did the smaller one that is these other blocks are loose I'm gonna take those out too because I still need to sand them because they're too high I don't know if someone made replacements for these held on by one nail and the same way I did the little door I'm going to clean this up I'm going to use mineral spirits this time oh and I'm going to take off this brass catch that's two different size nails and that looks like an upholstery tack this one they both look like a, actually they both look like upholstery tacks. There's some uh, dried residue from past finishes and maybe a little glue so I'm just going around with my uh, scraper and just uh, leveling all that out. The glass should not be sitting against all that rough stuff. So you can see that there. And then uh, after that, I'm going to go over with some uh, sandpaper again. Real light. Just to smooth everything up. Because this is really rough. There's some splintery parts. Okay, I'm just finishing up. Going over the outside, cleaning it with mineral spirits. Getting all the junk off. And I did the inside already. So that cleaned up pretty good. And then after this dries, I'll put on the scratch cover to try to make it all look a little more uniform. First, I'm going to go around and touch up with my little marker. 
such as uh, this right here. I wasn't quite happy with the with the way the um, min wax looked, the paste wax. So I decided to go over that with uh, uh, Howard's beeswax polish on a piece of fine four aught steel wool. I think it gives it just a little bit better shine without overdoing it. I took the rust off the little hinges with the wire wheel. See how it's not flat? It's like that other one for the little door. And I didn't show how I fixed the other one, I just demonstrated. But essentially, put the flat part here. And you can see, you can see how that's curved, how it's bent. So all I do is give it a good squeeze and then pull this back uh, just a little bit the hinge and that flattens it up do that to both ends just a little push in the opposite direction that you're you don't want to go too much because you can bend them the other way they're not the heaviest things here all right and now this little hinge it has some play in that and when you have a big door that can equal significant drift when it closes so just to tighten this hinge up a little bit I use pliers that are oversized so I can get some good pressure on there and on the hinge the last little curly cue on the end the little on each end that's I'm only gonna squeeze that part I'm just going to put them on there and then squeeze just a little bit then I'll do the other one squeeze just a little bit and see if that did anything okay I, f I feel that's tighter in fact that's, that might be all it needs it's a little bit loose in the middle I might, I might squeeze that one All right, it, it started to, it's, it, it's, it's right at the point where it's starting to get stiff because it's a little bit too tight. So a little oil in there, that'll be fine. And this one, just a little bit on this one. There, that's, uh, there's actually no play in there, but it goes back and forth nice. A little drop of oil on this, this one as well. Cleaning up a little, just a small amount of rust on these little tiny hinge screws. Uh, it's really hard on the wire wheel, spinning around at a great speed. So I just use my little handheld Dremel with a wire wheel on it. That way I can just hit it like that. And that's all it needs. Now before I put the hinges in, like on the little door, I test fit the hinge screws to see if they'll go all the way down and uh, they'll be nice and snug with the plate in there. They don't have to, have to go all the way down because the plate is, has a thickness there. They just need to go down to the point where they will keep the, the hinge plate uh, snug or they, and they're not stripped out. Now this one here, this is as far as I could turn it in without really starting to crank on it and you don't want to split the wood. So there's no way this one will tighten this all the way down. This will always be loose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back this out and just put my drill in there, my drill bit, and just clean out this hole, make it just a tad deeper, it doesn't take much. And uh, let's see, this one, I might do that to both of them. I couldn't find out if the little catch for the door was original or not. So 
I shined it up and some of the edges were rough so I just rounded over the corners and then uh, made them smooth and for uh, I wanted to put little brass nails in here and I didn't the, the, the small ones that I had the head was too small for the uh, hole so I got a longer nail and I just I just cut it off with my uh, the side side cutters on these pliers and then I put a little point on it on the sander so those can hold The little uh, blocks that hold the glass in, I broke one. I'm going to make four of them and I'm going to use walnut so they'll be a little more substantial because I have to reduce the thickness of these so they don't extend past the edge of the door. So if they're going to be thinner, they're going to be weaker and this thin wood, I think walnut would be better. So I'm just marking the the width right there. First I need to make this little lip. They have a little lip there to hold the glass. I managed to sand these down to the right size and now the trick is to drill a hole through and put the nail in and not split the wood so I will stain those with uh, that old English to uh, match the rest of it and hopefully that should be good for the glass I, I drilled a small hole first and then a bigger one so I wouldn't split split the wood because it's really thin to accommodate these large brass nails.
the holes I drilled helped these brads go in before they were just they didn't want to go down or at least that one didn't the glass was still moving around a little bit now it doesn't move why I cut two little pieces of cardstock just a thin cardstock off an old uh, Fram oil filter anyhow I just uh, pushed it cut a small slice and pushed it under one of those wood blocks and I put one on the other opposite side and then I just push it in with my screwdriver and that tightened up the glass so I don't need to do anything more to that that'll keep that there nice and keep the glass from moving around the hinges are on and it's all cleaned up no splinters so the door is done for now I just need to clean the glass a little bit later to remove any fingerprints oh and the little brass piece of course the little catch all right well this is the end of part one in the uh, case restoration video and many times when you get an old clock somebody else has already worked on it and you have to reverse some of the terrible things they've done to a clock and I did not show it I didn't show it in the video but when I was drilling out the hole for the little hinge on the door I went all the way through but it's not noticeable you can't see it because uh, I rubbed the hole I rubbed it with a colored putty stick and then I put the stain marker over it and then I rubbed it in with a little wax so unless unless you were really really zooming in there never see it but mistakes happen I could have been more careful that's life you learn and you move on so I hope I hope this video was helpful to someone with the, the details that were presented, but it does make the video longer. But I figure at least one video showing such detail would um, hopefully be helpful. So till next time, I hope everyone is in good health and the world continues to be crazy with all this virus stuff. So. Being able to work on a clock is a place where you don't have to wear your mask. So for that, I'm grateful. All right, we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching, and I hope everyone has a great day. Bye for now.